There are a number of contenders that come to mind when you ask the question who is the evilest woman in the Bible. Eve, the first woman, comes to mind. She made the fatal for everyone mistake of listening to the serpent's deception, and she ate from the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. As a result of her and her husband's actions, they allowed death and sin and suffering to enter into the world. Or the person that comes to mind is Delilah. She was a beautiful foreign woman, and beautiful foreign women were Samson's weakness. Delilah, swayed by her love for money, was enlisted by the Philistines, the enemies of the Israelites, to find the source of Samson's strength. After some time, Samson reveals the source of his strength to her, and Samson is captured by his enemies, and they gouged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza. Moving on, more likely than not, the person that comes to mind to most people when you ask the question who is the evilest woman in the Bible. The person who most people will say is Jezebel. And Jezebel was indeed an evil woman. We know of Jezebel and her introduction of Baal worship. We know the story of Jezebel in Naboth's vineyard and how evil and conniving she could be. However, I wouldn't say that Jezebel is the evilest woman in the Bible. I would say the evilest woman in the Bible is Athaliah. Now let's take a look at this evil woman called Athaliah. 2 Chronicles 22, 10-12 But when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of King Jehoram, the daughter of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she slew him not. And he was with them hid in the house of God six years, and Athaliah reigned over the land. The name Athaliah is also spelt as Athaliah. The name is featured in the Old Testament. She was the daughter of Jezebel and Ahab, and the wife of Jehoram, king of Judah. Yes, you heard that right. This woman was the daughter of Jezebel, and I am sure you have heard the saying, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And this is particularly true in the case of Athaliah. The reason being, Athaliah saw the life of her mother, she saw her wickedness, she saw her plotting and scheming, and she became much worse than her mother. According to the Hebrew Bible, the name Athaliah means afflicted by God. She was the only female king that reigned in the Bible. After the death of Ahaziah, her son, Athaliah usurped the throne and reigned for seven years. She massacred all the members of the royal house of Judah, except Joash, who was rescued by Jehosheba, the daughter of Joram, king of Israel, and the sister of Ahaziah. Athaliah was noted for her wicked acts, especially for the fact that she destroyed everyone that had the potential of becoming king and enthroned herself. Just put that into perspective. Look at how evil this evil woman was. When Athaliah received word that her son was dead, she seized the opportunity to usurp the throne by murdering Ahaziah's sons, her own grandsons, thus eradicating the entire royal family so she could take the throne. That is an evil woman. How far would you go to get your way? What if your children or grandchildren were keeping you from achieving your dream? Would you be willing to murder them? Athaliah was willing to do so, and she did so. Although Athaliah was the daughter of Jezebel and Ahab, the king of Israel, she got married to Jehoram, the king of Judah. Jehoram was an evil king, and his son Ahaziah took after him and proved himself evil as his father. Ahaziah's reign was less than a year as the king of Judah before he was assassinated alongside the king of Israel by Jehu. Athaliah was an ungodly queen like her mother Jezebel just the same way Ahaziah took after his father, Jehoram. Athaliah came from an ungodly background and counseled her son to do evil, just as her mother Jezebel counseled Ahab to do evil in Israel. 2 Chronicles 22, 2-4 says, 
Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned for one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. For they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. The evil counsel of Athaliah was one of the reasons he died an untimely death. When Athaliah became the king of Judah, she influenced the people and lured them into idolatry. She raised priests and built altars for the worship of Baal and the temple of God. 2 Kings 11.18 records that after Athaliah was killed, all the people of the land went into the house of Baal and broke it down. His altars and his images break they in pieces thoroughly, and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars, and the priest appointed officers over the house of the Lord. God will not lack a remnant of his people in every generation. As Athaliah murdered all the members of the royal house, God stirred up Jehosheba, the sister of Ahaziah, and the wife of the high priest to rescue Joash. Joash was only a baby at that time, but God raised help for him and rescued him from the grip of his terrible grandmother, Athaliah. Joash was kept in the temple for six years while Athaliah reigned as king over Judah. A successful revolution was organized in his favor, and he became the rightful king. In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehoiada set guards around the temple to secure Joash and proclaimed him as the king of Judah. 2 Chronicles 23.11 reads, Then they brought out the king's son and put upon him the crown, and gave him the testimony and made him king. And Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and said, God save the king. As soon as Athaliah heard the uproar in the temple and realized the king has been crowned, she ran out of the palace screaming, Treason! Treason! 2 Chronicles 23.13 She looked, and there was the king, standing by his pillar at the entrance. The officers and the trumpeters were beside the king, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets, and musicians with their instruments were leading the praises. Then. Athaliah tore her robes and shouted, Treason! Treason! But, at Jehoiada's command, she was thrust out of the temple and executed. Thereafter, the rightful king began his reign by executing the priest of Baal and destroying the altars of Baal through the guidance of the high priest, Jehoiada. Athaliah was not any way different from her mother Jezebel. Jezebel was an idolater and a murderer. She lured Ahab into idolatry and gave him evil counsel. She also fed and took care of 450 prophets of Baal. Instead of turning to God in repentance, Jezebel threatened to kill Elijah, the true prophet of God, after the contest on Mount Carmel. Jezebel was the one who masterminded the death of Naboth, the righteous man. She accused Naboth of blasphemy against God and against the king, just to murder him and to take possession of his field. Athaliah must have learned a lot of evil from her mother, and she perfectly took after her. Despite the kind of death Jezebel died, Athaliah never learnt from her mother's errors. Christian women should know that their children, especially female children, have a lot to learn from their lives. Mothers are great teachers. Children are watching you. It may not seem like they are watching you, but they are. Your children will take after you as a mother. They will tread the path you followed. The Bible says we should train our children the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Athaliah stood the chance of becoming a great and godly mother if she had one. This is not to mean that people who have bad parents will be justified for their evil actions. However, it is true that parents can influence their children's lives by raising them in the fear of the Lord. Saying this, also, there are people who grew up with evil parents and have turned out to be wonderful people. The fact remains true. We are to train a child up in the things of the Lord. One of the best ways to train a child up is by living your life as an example of godly living.
Who is the Queen of Heaven? God deserves to be worshipped. He alone deserves to be adored. He alone deserves to be admired because of who He is, the Great God. Within the Bible, we see a problem that occurs time and time again. And this problem is still happening today. And this problem is the problem of idolatry. The very core of idolatry is evil. It attempts to usurp worship and adoration from the one true God into other things. And fundamentally, this is an area of contention. Satan wants to be worshipped. When he came to tempt Jesus, he came and wanted to be worshipped. Luke chapter 4 verses 5 through 8. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. When the mark of the beast will be introduced, it will be an issue of worship, an issue of idolatry. Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. In the end times, the mark of the beast will be a literal mark that people will put on their foreheads and right hands, which will signify who they worship. And what does worship come back to? Worship comes back to the issue of idolatry. Idolatry is the worship of someone or something other than God as though it were God. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There was a form of idolatry which the children of Israel were involved in the days of Jeremiah the prophet, and this same idolatry is still happening today. The only difference is that it has taken up different forms, and that is the worship of, quote, the Queen of Heaven, which is a title for Ishtar, or Akkadian, also called Ashtoreth or Astarte. In their system of gods and goddesses, Ishtar was believed to be the wife of the false god called Baal, or Molech. As the wife of the chief male deity in these pagan worshipping cultures, Ishtar became known by the name Queen of Heaven. She was and is known as the goddess of love and fertility. Now, what a lot of people do not realize is that the term, quote, the Queen of Heaven can also be found in the Bible. The title, quote, the Queen of Heaven, is referred to in two passages in the Bible, both in the book of Jeremiah. The Queen of Heaven was the Babylonian Ishtar, the mother goddess, the mother of God. There are a range of different religions and beliefs who refer to Ishtar as the mother of God. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18 The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. In Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18, the prophets recounted the abominable practices which the Israelites did to provoke God to anger. The children gathered woods, the fathers ignited the fire while the women kneaded their dough to bake cakes to what they eulogize as the queen of heaven. As such, the children of Israel and their entire families engaged in division of labor to prosper idolatry in the land. The queen of heaven was also thought to be the wife of Baal, which is also called Molech, a god which Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab, was presumed to have introduced to the Israelites. 
The word cakes in Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18 is kawanim, meaning a preferred sacrificial wafer. That word is of foreign origin, occurring again only in Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 19, where the same cult is described. Quote, a female deity is foreign to Old Testament theology, so the implication is that this cult was of non-Hebraic origin. End quote, Harrison. One of the motivations for the worship of Ashtaroth is that she was believed to be responsible for fertility in women. And because children were greatly desired by women in those days, this foreign worship was imbibed by the Israelites despite all the warnings of God to them against idolatry. God detests sin, but one of the sins that almost immediately incurs the wrath of God is idolatry. God destroyed foreign nations and gave their lands to the Israelites because of their idolatrous practices. Yet, the Israelites took over those abominable practices and provoked God to anger. The second passage where the Queen of Heaven is directly mentioned is Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 17 through 25, where the Israelites refuse the word of the Lord through prophet Jeremiah and proclaim their loyalty to the Queen of Heaven. Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 16 through 19 reads, As for the word that you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you, but we will certainly do whatever has gone out of our own mouth to burn incest to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offerings to her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the city of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of food, were well off, and saw no trouble. But since we stopped burning incest to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have lacked everything and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. The women also said, And when we burned incest to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make cakes for her, to worship her, and pour out drink offerings to her without our husband's permission? This was the response of the Israelites to Jeremiah when he brought them the word of the Lord against their idolatrous practices. The Israelites were so obstinate to God's warnings they were not only proclaiming their allegiance to Ashtaroth, the Queen of Heaven, they also ascribed the peace and prosperity which they received from God to her. The Wearsby Commentary Bible states, The men and women listening to Jeremiah tried to defend their sins by appealing to experience. They used the pragmatic argument, quote, If it works, it must be right. When they lived in Judah and secretly worshipped the Queen of Heaven, the goddess of fertility, everything went well with them. They had plenty of food and enjoyed comfortable circumstances. But when King Josiah made people give up their idols, things began to get worse for them. Conclusion? They were better off when they disobeyed God and worshipped idols. I want you to notice that although they were involved in evil, idolatry practice, things seemingly went well for them. Demons can make you feel real good. So often, we associate evil spirits with demonic possession or torment. But that is not always the case. Evil spirits are deceiving spirits, and they can make you feel really good. This is why I do not doubt that people involved in evil and satanic things do experience positive things. Just like the children of Israel prospered under the worship of the Queen of Heaven. There are people who today are being deceived by spirits because seemingly once they got involved in these evil practices, their lives got better. These people won't be lying. Their lives genuinely would have improved, but it is a deception. Allow me to give you a modern example, which is sweeping across our world today. Specific forms of meditation. There are some forms of meditation that are out there which are embedded in strange religions and its roots are embedded in snakes. And people who meditate use strange techniques and practices channeling spirits they have no idea even exist. And when they speak about it, they talk about how their lives have improved, how they cope better with stress and anxiety, and so on. And I do not doubt that these people are telling the truth about the improvements that they've experienced. But what is the source of these improvements? Just like people in the day of Jeremiah used pragmatic arguments, 
quote, if it works, it must be right. People are doing that today. Just because something works does not mean it is right. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. I read Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8 at the start of the sermon, and I want you to notice that Satan showed Jesus all the kingdoms of this world, and he offered to give Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. Satan would not be able to offer these kingdoms if they were not in his possession to give. Satan has power. The dark side has power. And just because something works does not mean God condones it. God does not tolerate idolatry. And just like the people in the day of Jeremiah were involved with idolatry with the Queen of Heaven, people are involved in idolatry today. These people viewed the Queen of Heaven in a positive light because they were receiving positive results. But the truth is, you can receive positive results doing evil for a season. But ultimately, you will have to answer to God. Live according to God's law. Live according to what God condones. Unfortunately, there are Christians who stray into practices that are evil in the eyes of the Lord and stay in those practices because they are receiving positive results. But one day, you will have to answer to the living God. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9-14 through 14. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God.